Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for more powers next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building the Martian Manhunter. He's a staple of the Justice League with nearly the same amount of powers as Superman. Please be less, please be less, please be less, please be less... Oh god, it's more. Oh no. Oh, and some have called me... Alien Von Human Killer. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, there's a bunch, so I'm just gonna put Martian stuff in the graphic, but intangibility, plasticity, telepathy, lasers, psychic blasts, flight, mind reading, energy absorption, super strength, and birthday powers. That's blowing out candles really well. For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure you keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Put your intelligence and strength at 14. Your muscles need to be very strong, and the brain is also a muscle. Don't Google that, just believe me, and we'll move on. Dexterity, constitution, and wisdom all at 12. You're pretty good at all of those things. Actually, really good at all of those things, we just can't have everything high. If it helps, your charisma can be 9, your friends like you a lot, and you're good at pretending, but as far as being yourself goes, that's a little ill-defined. Everyone get ready to be mad because I'm not using changeling. Why? Why wouldn't you do that? What's wrong with you? Well, when John changes his shape, he can change his clothes. Changelings can't do that. But there is a starting race that does let you do that. It's called Custom Lineage. With that, you can grab the Eldritch Adept feat for the Warlock Invocation, Mask of Many Faces, to cast Disguise Self at Will. That changes your appearance, including your clothes. It's a small difference, but an important one. Bump your intelligence with your two free points for better psychic stuff, grab performance for your skill of choice, then make your own background for investigation and history proficiency. Call it the Clark Kent's ethics teacher background. We'll kick things off as a fighter, actually, because those are the saving throw proficiencies I want, strength and constitution. And you get two skills from the fighter list, like athletics and perception, for some super strength and super senses. You can also pick a fighting style, like unarmed fighting, to deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage with an unarmed attack, or 1d8 with two free hands, and 1d4 damage per round to a creature you have grappled. There's nothing about this that specifies you don't turn your hand into a giant mallet, so I think you can turn your hand into a giant mallet. You also get second wind, letting you recover 1d10, plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. So level one, we're getting shape shifting and recovery. We're basically halfway there. Halfway to halfway to halfway there. Spells are gonna be the fastest way to get what we need. So let's just jump over to wizard right away, letting us grab some spells and cantrips for Charlie. Message lets you whisper to someone within 120 feet of you and they can whisper back for some low grade telepathy. Mind sliver lets you use your telepathy for pain, forcing an intelligence saving throw on a creature, dealing 1d6 psychic damage to those that fail and giving them a d4 penalty to their next saving throw. It can be used to chain together with itself since it's a cantrip. Also, it uses a saving throw. Firebolt will give you some heat vision, dealing 1d10 fire damage with a ranged spell attack. I know people think of it as radiant damage, but it is called heat vision. So, you know, heat. Making a fire isn't that much of a stretch. Speaking of stretching, if you want to stretch your legs, Long Strider will add 10 feet to your movement speed for an hour. Sure, we can't fly yet or punch people across the map, but we're level two. What do you want? Wish? Expeditious Retreat will let you go even faster when you're faster, letting you dash with a bonus action for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration. Since we can't fly, we might as well fall with style using Feather Fall to prevent up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage. Use it for the Justice League members that aren't monks or have a flying speed. So Aquaman or... Aquaman. Jump will triple your jump distance for a minute. If you can't fly, you might as well hop. To defend yourself better, Mage Armor will make your AC 13 plus your Dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor, and Shield will add 5 to your AC as a reaction for a turn. It's supposed to be an arcane shield, but I think bending your body like a rubber band is also a good fit. Second level wizards get to choose a school, and if you want to be defensive, Abjuration is the way to go, but also War Mage. What about War Mage? Do War Mage. You get Tactical Wit to add your Intelligence modifier to your Initiative bonus, which will make up for a kind of mediocre Dexterity modifier. You also get Arcane Deflection, letting you add 2 to your AC as a reaction, or 4 to a saving throw, but then you can't cast anything other than cantrips until the end of your next turn. War Mage actually pairs really well if you want a multi-class, a martial class, since you can use Arcane Deflection all you want, and still have all of your punching abilities as a backup instead of first or second level spells. Someone wrote me a five paragraph essay when I didn't use Blade Singer for a character because I said they don't sing, 
that was a joke. I just don't want stacking extra attacks that don't stack. I don't want these videos to be an hour long. Sometimes I make a short joke rather than holding your hand through everything I choose, but hey, that's why I'm not going Blade Singer here. You also get two more spells. Comprehend Languages lets you know and understand all languages, though you can't necessarily speak them. Still useful when you're an alien. You know, I just finished doing the Comprehend Languages thing, but I have a feeling someone's going to say, oh, extra attack from Blade Singer is slightly different than regular extra attack. Yeah, it is, but guys, come on. I just, I just want him to be a war mage, okay? It's just better for him. It gives him more defensive stuff. Can we just move on together as a society? Anyway, Catapult lets you force a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail for some offensive telekinesis. Third level wizards can choose second level spells. Enlarge Reduce lets you increase a creature's size, giving them advantage on strength checks and saves, and an extra d4 of damage for their attacks with weapons. Unfortunately, you do have to use a weapon. This isn't like an unarmed attack, weapon attack. Specifically, it's for weapons. But the important thing here is that it sets your size to large, which is a 10 by 10 foot square rather than 5 by 5, so you have longer arms. Boom. You can also shrink in size to suit your mood, but it's bad and it hurts you, so don't do that. If you want to make your enemy small, you can force a constitution saving throw on your enemy. If they fail, they're tiny. I think that's one of the few powers Jade doesn't actually have. Invisibility makes you invisible for an hour, depending on your concentration, or until you cast a spell or make an attack. To be fair, it is hard to bamboozle after you set someone on fire. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement. Intelligence is the best place to invest, since spells are obviously a little bit better than just punching stuff. Speaking of, if you want to break people's brains, Tasha's Mind Whip forces an intelligence saving throw on a creature, dealing 3d6 psychic damage to those that fail, stopping them from making a reaction and making them choose between a movement action, action, or bonus action on their turns, helping take them out of the fight. Mind Spike deals a little more damage, forcing a wisdom saving throw and dealing 3d8 psychic damage to those that fail. You also know the enemy's location for up to an hour, depending on your concentration. They do call you manhunter for a reason wait what is that reason your name is super sinister fifth level wizards can learn third level spells meaning that we can finally fly with the spell fly to give a creature a 60 foot flying speed for 10 minutes depending on your concentration thankfully you do have featherfall in case someone makes you drop that concentration but if you just want to go fast haste will double your movement speed give you a plus two to your ac advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action to dash disengage hide use an object or make one attack hey that means that we kind of have extra attack now kind of. These buffs last for a minute depending on your concentration, and once it's over you have to take a round off of actions and reactions to just kind of cool down. If you run that fast, your feet might catch on fire, and fire is not your friend. Sixth level war mages get power surge, letting you add half your wizard level in force damage to a spell. You have one of these per short rest, but can get a number equal to your intelligence modifier by shutting down spells with counter spell. That's a spell that shuts down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spell's level. It's kind of hard to figure out how to make a bendy person who can't be harmed, but if you just say spells don't happen, that's a pretty good way to do it. Intellect Fortress gives a creature advantage on wisdom, intelligence, and charisma saving throws and resistance to psychic damage for an hour depending on your concentration should make battling Brainiac a little bit easier. 7th level wizards can learn 4th level spells. Stone Skin gives you bullet immunity powers, giving you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour depending on your concentration. People would pay good money for rocks from Mars. I'm sure it's because Martian rocks are harder than Earth rocks. Greater invisibility turns you invisible for a minute depending on your concentration. So why is it greater when it seems 59 times worse than regular invisibility? Because concentration is the only thing that drops it, meaning that you can cast other spells, make attacks, and fight your enemies invisibly. You can't hit what you can't see. Believe me, I've tried. Why do you think I'm always talking about punching ghosts on this channel? Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement so you can cap off your intelligence modifier to be one of the best casters in the Justice League, even if your spells are just sort of Martian things. For this level spell, Charm Monster forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, failing that they're charmed by you for an hour for a little Martian mind control. We'll bounce back to the second level for Gust of Wind, creating a 60 foot line of wind that forces strength saving throws on creatures inside. If they fail, they're pushed back 15 feet, and even if they succeed, it costs twice as much movement to go through the area. Super Breath is among the most silly powers out there, but Clark and his former civics teacher, Mrs. Klingman, get pretty good use out of it. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells. Telekinesis lets you move things with your brain that weigh a thousand pounds or less. If that thing is a creature, it can make an athletics check against your intelligence check. Winner decides if they float. Josh has described this as using mind control on matter, which is really cool as long as you don't think about it too much. If you'd rather mind control a mind though, dominate person forces a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid, failing that they're under your control 
control for a minute following your general instructions or letting you take direct control with your action. It's sort of an ethical gray area, but if you can use it to save a life, just apologize afterwards. I think that's a thing that Paris would do. 10th level war mages get durable magic, adding two to your saving throws and AC while you concentrate on a spell. I think it pairs best with haste for plus four AC, but haste is also my favorite spell in the game, so I'm a little biased. If you would rather just go nuts with skills to be perfect at whatever you need to be, skill empowerment gives a creature expertise in a skill they're proficient with, doubling their proficiency bonus for an hour. Enhance ability is a second level spell that gives a creature advantage on skill checks of a certain type. Strength also doubles their carrying capacity. Dexterity stops them from taking falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less, and constitution gives them 2d6 temporary HP. It might seem like skill empowerment is obviously the better spell since it's fifth level, but enhance ability on intelligence would give you advantage on counter spell shutdowns. Yuichiro is the last surviving Martian, so there's probably a reason for that. I know, like, he isn't actually the last surviving Martian, but they say he is sometimes, so I'll count it. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells. Tensor's transformation lets you pretend you didn't take 10 levels of a casting class, giving you 50 temporary HP, an extra attack for 2 attacks with your action, advantage on attacks that use weapons, and 2 d12 force damage to all weapon attacks, which includes your unarmed attacks, unlike the advantage thing. I don't know why they're worded so weird. Take it up with Wizards of the Coast. Last 10 minutes depending on your concentration, and when it ends, you can make a constitution saving throw of 15 to avoid a level of exhaustion. Since we kick things off as a fighter, you have proficiency with constitution saving throws, so if you need to wallop, you can without worry. Oh, you also can't cast spells while transformed. Just pretend someone stole your chocolate and that made you real mad. Investiture of Wind lets you get gusts of wind going while you fly, giving you 60 feet of flying speed. Ranged attacks against you have disadvantage for a little bullet resistance, and you can force a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube, dealing 2d10 bludgeoning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, and you can push them 10 feet. You can make that little wind attack every turn, and unlike Tensor's Transformation, as long as the other spells you're casting aren't concentration, you can cast them with this up. It's just a nice little all-around suite of buffs. 12th level wizards get another ability score improvement, and boy howdy, we need a lot of stats to make Joan work. So start with strength, since it will be useful when you use Tensor's Transformation, or if you're using Arcane Deflection and need an alternative to casting for the round. For this level spell, Sunbeam lets you get that radiant heat vision you were asking for, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot line, dealing 68 radiant damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It also blinds creature for a round, and you can fire another beam every round for a minute depending on your concentration. You've got a lot of concentration, but it's okay, since you're a war mage, all that focus just makes you better. I guess that means it's unfortunate that mass suggestion doesn't require concentration. Instead, it forces a wisdom saving throw on up to 12 creatures. Failing that they have to try and complete a task that you give them for 24 hours. In the Gorilla Grodd video, I joked that you could ask someone to bring you every banana in the city. Obviously, that was a dumb joke, but Hino could have everyone bring her every chocolate covered banana in the city, and that would be entirely reasonable. 13th level wizards get 7th level spells, which is what I was sticking it out for because if you want to walk through walls, etherealness is the only way to do it. I know that there's the ghost rogue that can do it. I'm just trying to make these videos fast. You're so smart and pretty. You go to the border ethereal plane, can move through walls that don't exist in the ethereal plane, and you can even fly even if it's a little bit slower. You can still perceive the material plane, though creatures on the material plane can't perceive you. Also, everything's a little bit gray to you. It lasts for eight hours depending on your concentration, which means that you can pair it with Polymorph to be a ghost T-Rex. Polymorph lets you turn a creature into a beast of challenge rating equal to or less than their current challenge rating. If they're unwilling, they can make a wisdom saving throw to resist, but use it on yourself, and suddenly your enemies have to fight a kaiju before they have to fight you. It lasts for an hour depending on your concentration. So now we finally have everything except for stretchy arms. Well, we still have some stretchy arms. We just want really stretchy arm. For that, we're going to go back to fighter, even though fighters only get action surge at the second level. I say only, but action surge is still really good, letting you make two actions instead of one in the same turn once per short rest. That's a spell and a cantrip, so you could mind sliver someone to make them worse at their next saving throw against another spell you cast. But third level fighters can get extra stretchy thanks to martial archetypes like Battlemaster. This gives you maneuver you can spend one of your four superiority die on. Those are D8s that make you more Martian-y. Lunging attack lets you add five feet to the range of a melee weapon attack, which again does include unarmed strikes. It's weird. With enlarge up, that means that you're now able to punch someone 15 feet away, swinging your arms with the length of a basketball hoop. You also get to add a D8 to that damage. Evasive footwork lets you add your superiority die to your AC while you're moving for less opportunity attacks. Pair it with haste and you'll just sort of get to leave no ifs, ands, or buts. Tactical assessment lets you add your superiority die to a history and investigation or insight check just to boost your skills a little bit more. Unfortunately, we can't get 20 in every stat. He's not an artificer, but if you still want to be a broken character, good news, you can get calligraphy proficiency from Student of War. I know that's why you're all here. 
Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement or a feat. We'll actually grab the actor feat for plus one charisma, advantage on deception or performance checks when you're pretending to be someone else, and you can replicate someone's speech after a minute of listening to them. If Superman dies but you want the world to think he didn't, this could be a useful ability. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action. It's like Tensor's Transformation, but all the time. I mean, it's a very small part of Tensor's Transformation. It's a solid backup after you've used the arcane deflection. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement. Use it to get your strength as high as possible for better fighting it's a shame we can't cap it but the only way to walk through walls is etherealness or ghost rogue i know and being a ghost rogue would stop us from getting like everything else we need so something's got to take a hit use skill empowerment or enhance ability if you need to lift or just turn into a t-rex our capstone is the seventh level of battle master to know your enemy letting you understand a creature's strength dexterity constitution hp ac fighter levels or total levels you know if you're better worse or equal to them in two of these regards using that psychic stuff to get a better read on everyone you're fighting you also get another superiority die and two more maneuvers to spend them on pushing attack forces a strength saving throw on creatures failing that they're pushed 15 feet away for the last one i don't know precision attack lets you add your superiority die to the attack roll to make sure that you hit we really just needed more lunging attacks and I wanted the superiority die for that. That's why we came here. But uh, yeah, precision attack, fine. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can do a lot. Remember at the start when I said that you're Superman with more powers? Well, you're Superman with more powers. You also get more powerful when you use those powers, getting a solid defensive buff anytime you're concentrating. Finally, the role-playing potential of unlimited shape changing and advantage on checks to pretend to be someone else is unfathomable. Should be a great time. Except... You're not good at charisma checks, or dexterity checks, or wisdom checks, or constitution saves, or really anything except intelligence. Joan got spread a little too thin. Also, even if you're buffed while you're concentrating, you still have so many spells that won't play together at the same time, meaning that you could end up dropping slots. Finally, low constitution is a big enough issue to mention twice, since it means lower HP and potential big ouchies. But you have so many options. Getting hit isn't something you should worry about. Do anything. Pretty much anything you want. Just watch out when those things get a little too hot. It would be a shame if you lost your job. You know, got let go, canned, severed from the company. I meant fired. He's bad at taking fire damage. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more. And sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.